Hello everyone and welcome back to the Capablanca saga. I know some of you were afraid that we are through with the Capablanca saga, but uh, that couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, it'd be just weird if, you, if we finish the saga without checking out Lascar versus Capablanca, the actual match, not the negotiations, which we've covered. And if you are just tuning into the Capablanca saga, which, you know, it's a shame, but it, it can happen. Uh, I will put a link in the description below that will take you to the playlist covering the entire Capablanca saga we've covered so far. And every video uh, we make uh, will be, you know, just added to that playlist. So, so far we've covered a few games where, where Capablanca was a child. Uh, then we covered a few games um, between his match against Cuban ch national champion Juan Corzo. Then we went over to the match, a uh, famous match against Frank James Marshall, where Capablanca just obliterated Marshall. Uh, then we traveled to San Sebastian, Capablanca's first big international tournament of 1911. Uh, then we've traveled uh, to St. Petersburg uh, to the uh, big international tournament of 1914. Uh, World Champ chess champion Emmanuel Lasker also participated and won that event. And here, this is um, also played in St. Petersburg uh, after the, the great tournament. Uh, Capablanca held a simultaneous exhibition, and this is one of the games that was played there. It's against uh, a gentleman named Bashtirov. Uh, we don't have any other information about this gentleman, only uh, the name Bashtirov, and we don't have a photo of anything, that's why uh, I'm wearing a hoodie as usual to honor the hoodie guy. And uh, a lot of you have been asking me in the comments, uh, well, for a very long time, most likely since since the beginning of the Capablanca saga, uh, to show a few Capablanca uh, games that he played against uh, famous composer Sergei Prokofiev, uh, this gentleman here. And uh, well, while we will show them, uh, we do have to do it chronologically, I think that's best. Uh, but he's also one of the players that uh, played in the simultaneous exhibition Capablanca held. And the next video in the Capablanca saga will be Capablanca versus Sergei Prokofiev. So I do hope you're ready for that. And also the second link in the description below will be uh, a YouTube link to Best of Prokofiev. If you want to just, you know, listen to some classical music to really get in the mood for the, for the next game. Uh, in the Capablanca saga. Uh, but yeah, getting back to this game, I I'm sure you're all going to enjoy it. It's a wonderful game, um, features um, a, a very nice opening, and although we don't know anything about Mr. Bashtirov, uh, we do know that he was he was no noob, as he did know some opening theory, as you'll see in the game. So without further ado, let's check out the game. Uh, Capablanca, as this is a simultaneous exhibition, has the white pieces, so we have e4, uh, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and now comes bishop to c4. Uh, the Italian game is on the board, we have bishop to c5, and here comes... Uh, yeah, not not that, uh, c3, the Gioco Piano, the, the main line. Uh, we have knight to f6, uh, we have d4, the standard line, uh, e captures on d4, and we have c captures on d4, and bishop to b4 check. Uh, knight blocks check, and now comes knight captures on e4. And here Capablanca just castles. And here already the first moment in the game where we, where we can really tell that Bashtirov um, is not a beginner as he do, does know some opening theory. Here you could easily fall into a trap of, of going for, uh, <laughs> for, for the rook, knight captures, pawn captures, bishop captures, uh, and then fall into the, uh, t the Greco attack after bishop to a3. Uh, you could capture the rook and then rook e1 check just wins the game. There's really not all that much you can do. You can block with the knight. The king has nowhere to go. The bishop is controlling the entire diagonal. Uh, and then it's just over. Bishop captures. The queen is trapped uh, all over. Uh, here we know that Bashtirov knew some opening theory. He goes for bishop captures on c3. And this is in fact the best move. Uh, and Capablanca doesn't recapture the bishop. If he recaptures, then d5 really gives black just a comfortable game. The bishop has to move. Black castles. Uh, the knight comes into the, the bishop comes into the game. Uh, it's just going to be a very enjoyable position for black. So here Capablanca continues in great style. After bishop captures, we have d5. Now black has to choose whether he wants to give up the knight or the bishop. It's always better to give up the knight most of the times. Uh, bishop to f6, uh, offering the knight. But now again Capablanca is in no hurry to recapture the piece. First rook to e1. Uh, just, you know, uh, increasing the pressure, developing his pieces, there's always time to recapture the piece. Uh, knight to e7, and now just rook captures on e4. Uh, we have d6 by Bashtirov, not allowing any further advance of the d5 pawn, uh, preparing to develop the, li the light square bishop, also black is now ready to castle. Uh, we have bishop to g5 by Capablanca, bishop captures, knight captures, and here black just castles. And here it seems like... Uh, well, the d5 pawn is grabbing a lot of space in the center for white, but it's also kind of hemming in this uh, light square bishop. So Capablanca will definitely have to waste at least one move uh, to activate this bishop. On the other hand, uh, it doesn't seem like uh, 
well, there's, there are any problems for black. If black just plays h6, surely all will be well. Uh, but here, Capablanca doesn't waste time. As you can see, uh, the rook is ready to join the attack, the queen is ready to join the attack, but if you play something like queen h5, just h6 will push the knight back, nothing going on here. So here, without wasting time, knight captures on h7. Uh, so black has to decide what to do here. Uh, of course, you have to capture. It's it's uh, the best for black. We have uh, king captures on h7 and now queen to h5 check. King to h8 and now comes rook to h4. So pretty much everyone knew that this was going to happen. White is now threatening queen to h7 but also queen to h8 checkmate. Uh, so what do you do here? You have to prevent checkmate somehow. In the game, f6 was played. f5 would have been better. Uh, but for a reason that will uh, will reveal itself later. Here black played f6. Now any queen check will be met with king to f7. And also the queen, the king now has an escape route uh, planned. Uh, so here Capablanca just plays bishop to d3. And now you can see that f5 was definitely better than f6. If f5 would, uh, you know... Uh, was played there would be no immediate threat of checkmate now here if white plays a let's say if black plays something like queen to e8 then you can go for the famous checkmating sequence i'm pretty sure all of you know it uh the f7 is covered by the queen so just bishop to h7 check king moves bishop moves now with check from the queen king has to move and now that the bishop is controlling f7 now queen to h7 or h8 will be checkmate so already threatening checkmate with bishop to d3. Like I said, f5 F, F would have been better here. Uh, so rook to e8 by black. Uh, you have to uh, prevent this. Now bishop to h7 check will not be met with king to h8, but rather king to f8. So here Capablanca has to increase the pressure. Rook to e1, an excellent move. Again, if black, play, if black makes a slow move, let's say queen here uh, then you play rook captures on e7 now the rook also controls the f7 square this is again the threat of checkmate and if you capture the rook once again you get queen to h8 check king here and now how do you continue the attack i'm sure you all can see it uh, even without pausing the video i imagine but if you need to you know feel free to do it uh, bishop to g6 check the, this square is covered by the pawn, these squares are covered by the queen, the king has to capture the bishop, and now, of course, queen to h5 will be checkmate. Uh, you always have to, when, when you're trying to find a checkmate like this, uh, you always have to see this. This is what always helps me. If, uh, if there's something blocking the king from uh, one square uh, in front of him and one square to the, to the side, then any check will be checkmate if it's delivered here uh, by the queen. Uh, so th there's that. So here black must waste the move. He plays f5, blocking the bishop, uh, and now uh, Capablanca just uh, brings the rook into the game. Rook to e6. A wonderful rook lift. Uh, again, if bishop captures, then pawn captures, now the pawn controls f7. And although this would have been black's best bet, it's still a very uncomfortable position. Uh, again, the queen is a threatening checkmate. You have to give up the knight to uh, at least create some uh, squares for your king. Uh, and after queen to h7 check, king moves, now the queen can capture on g6, and after black tries to exchange queens, uh, you can even do this, captures, captures, and now after bishop captures, black will have a terrible position. You will not be able to develop any of your pieces uh, if the rook tries to come into the game, rook h8 check, picks up the other rook, uh, you will never get rid of this pawn, it's on a nice light square, protected by a light square bishop, rook is coming to h7, you can just start, uh, you know, cleaning up all the other pawns, or you don't even have to, you don't want to allow black the chance to act activate you can just move your rook and then start pushing the king side pawns a lot of ways white can go about this so th this would basically be a very slow death against capablanca so after rook to e6 uh, bashtirov who was no beginner i i have to add uh, played bishop to d7 but bishop to d7 although uh, you know it's a move black has to play something uh, it doesn't work white actually has a forced checkmate in 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 four moves uh, so th this time feel free to pause the video and try to find uh, the winning sequence for white. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. You are you are an excellent finder of beautiful mating sequences. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, once again, the theme of the game is, uh, you know, 
control the f7 square. So here Capablanca does it, rook to f6. Now the rook controls the f7 square, again the threat is queen to h8, checkmate or, or to h7. And uh, well, the most obvious move is uh, just pawn captures rook, but then it's just, you know, checkmate, queen h8, check, king f7, uh, rook checks, king g6, and queen g7 will be now checkmate. So this is one uh, such idea, and uh, there's no other idea. And any other move you play also ends in checkmate. Any sneaky knight g6 idea will also be met with just queen to h7 checkmate. Uh, so th there is no way to avoid it. Uh, so yeah, rook to f6, just a wonderful, wonderful... I mean, every move Capablanca played here is just wonderful. Starting from knight h7, just a, just a beautiful attack. Captures, captures, check, check. Uh, forces now uh, will force now checkmate. You have to prevent it. Black mates makes a slight ac ac inaccuracy. Uh, pawn to f5 would have been better. Again threatens checkmate with bishop to d3. Black stops it. Again threatens checkmate with rook to e1. Black stops it. And again rook to e6. Just a stifling move. You don't have a good way to avoid it other than the slow death we've shown. And here after this is just rook f6. Uh, it was in this position that uh, Bashtirov, Mr. Huri guy, resigned the game. And just a wonderful game Capablanca played in this 1914 uh, simultaneous exhibition in St. Petersburg. Uh, so yeah, uh, for the next game, we already mentioned we are going to show Capablanca versus Sergei Prokofiev. Uh, I do hope you will enjoy this game as well. And like I said, yeah, I've been listening to some uh, Prokofiev uh, composings for uh, for <laughs> today. And uh, the first thing in the description below will be a link to... Uh, there's a YouTube video called Best of Prokofiev, a lot of... Uh, compositions you can listen to uh, they're really just great you know feel, feel free to get in the mood for uh, for the next game in the Capablanca series uh, so yeah uh, that's the game uh, I do hope you enjoyed it and that you're enjoying my coverage of the Capablanca saga so far uh, I would like to thank Eli Martinez Raymond Letta uh, Ruben Carlo Benante uh, Frank Sonnenmann and uh, Shai Gross for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot I really appreciate it uh, as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you for watching and I will see you soon uh, there will be one video in between of the next uh, game in the Capablanca series. I've, I've acquired a PGN of a chess game played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be covering that today. Because it's, uh, you know, just a, I think it's the only game so far known that, uh, that he played that we actually have the moves to. Uh, so if you have any ideas of a good title for that game, you know, feel free to, you know, share, share in the comments below. Uh, thank you all and I'll see you soon.